we all get something important out of uh, being Million Cups organizers. We have some very interesting conversations and we cultivate our own connection. Uh, so we're radically intentionally inclusive. Everybody who walks in the door belongs here and you probably have something you can learn from all, everybody in here. So uh, let's get to work. Okay, that's our principles. So that's basically an outline. Uh, I'm here also to remind you that you should present at One Million Cups. Uh, if you have a company uh, that's organized as a for-profit business, that is you sell things for more than it costs to make them to people who are not your mom, uh, and you have been in existence for about five years or less, that's the perfect fit. Uh, now, you could have been in existence for longer than five years uh, if you're undergoing a pivot, or you might not be selling anything yet. You might not be in market, but maybe somebody's invested in your ideas. Maybe you've got a grant, maybe you've got seed stage funding. And if you've got a significant amount of money that's coming to your company, but you're not in market yet, we'd love to hear what you're planning. Sorry. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. We can thank our sponsors too. Oh, well, this is us. Uh, I'm Paul Sauter. Uh, uh, Lisa Atkins, who's not here today, is one of our organizers. Eric Rince Whitmore over there is one of our organizers. Adam and Sonia, who is uh, online these days. Um, you can talk to any of us about the Million Cups experience, and you'll also notice that there's room on this slide for one more person. If you're at all interested in learning how to become a Million Cups organizer and in increasing the depth of your connections to people in the community, talk to any of us, and we'll tell you how to get on board. Uh, it's also a pleasure to thank our sponsors, Fat Pipe, who's been our, uh, our host for eight years now. Jason Collins Photography, always making us look good, even when we're online. More than organize, organize your stuff, your mind, and providing coffee. That's Miriam Ortiz Pino, who uncharacteristically is here today. Foundation for Sustainable Living, providing coffee. Um, Novantum Software Development, providing baked goods. And Vive Solutions, providing tea for those of you shaking the influence of the DMV. All right. Uh, we're good, right? We're, we're fantastically and well. Technically, we're all right. Tec no. no, we're actually not. So, um, are you? Let's are see. you technically they can't all right? See. I slightly hear her somewhere. You can't hear those guys, which means we won't be able to hear the presenter. Sonia, right? what did you just we say? We will in a second, hopefully. Can you hear us? What? I was just asking you if you could hear me. Do I slightly hear somewhere? Read your lips. Huh, yes, read my lips. Uh, that's that's what we're going to do. This is a lesson to all of you. Always have your presentation on index cards. You can just hold up. Right? <laughs> well, if you do the caption, you might have to read your lips. <laughs> Eric, I was turn this thing off. I promise right, Alex, I don't good. normally have this much trouble yeah. with this. No, no, it's great. We're, we're golden. <laughs> Eventually, they will we're, figure this out. We're still out. working through it. Let's see. Yeah, and it's like if, if PowerPoint PowerPoint doesn't work, I can totally do it without it. Oh yeah, he's got he's got the slides. Cool. But they they can't hear. Yeah, they can't hear us. They're trying to get the speaker connected. Um, it's Bluetooth, and sometimes there's some issues. Check one two. Connected. Check one two. Sonia. Yeah. No, didn't hear that. Just say <laughs> that's the worst. Check one two. Can we still have? It looks like we've got people talking online. Is that I correct? Know. They have like yes. Check okay. one two. Can you get? Can they see the chat? Huh. Well, yep. All right. So the other bad version. Eric, um, I can hear your presenter. <laughs> They can't hear us in the room, Phil. Yeah, bring that over here. We're gonna do. We're gonna do old school. We're we're, at, we're we're having fun tech issues this morning. All right. Oh yeah. All right, Dixie Cup. Looks like we're going old school here today. Let's see. I'm gonna take out my Bluetooth. That means we've got to turn the mic off on my earbuds. Oh, is that going to work? Well, as long as we turn off the mic on the others. Okay, for a second. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll, we'll kill people. Oh, yeah. True. Yeah, that's kind of. Uh, I don't know if they're paying attention to the, the chat. Yeah. I think they're a little. Uh, right now, so, yeah, I can right see right you now. trying to. <laughs> well, I think she's she's getting good stuff over there. <laughs> or at least, oh, is Miriam also chatting in there? That's great. You guys have a conversation with yourselves. So you can tell <laughs> There we go. 
Oh, I hate this machine. Will it let me get to mute? It did. <laughs> Okay, we can Put a new one right here today, but we're going to focus on solutions. Solutions, solutions. Uh, can folks still hear us uh, who are online? All yeah. right, I'm getting a nodded head. Uh, let's see. Um, do anything at all without. So can I, can I hear some stuff or maybe that's not? Microphone check. Oh. All right, so I am hearing something on our system that's really low. Let's microphone see. check, microphone check. I'm appreciating that. That is helpful. Microphone check. Microphone check. Check, check. One, two, one, two. Right check, check. One, two, one, two. All right. Can we boost that a little bit over there? Check, check. One, two, one, two. The master volume right side. All right. Oh, I'm hearing a little bit of uh, a little bit of feedback. Check, check. One, yeah. two, one, two. That's what we're trying to do. Is the laptop's not sending? Yeah. Um, all right. Well, this is a fun and not very happy situation. <laughs> see. All right. Let's see. All right, check, check, check. We're still check, check, check. Find the mic. That might that would work. Let's that's a good idea, I think. Let's try that. Microphone check. I appreciate that. <laughs> microphone check, microphone check, microphone check. Microphone check. Okay, since I got through to them, uh, they're going to try using a cell phone to get on Zoom and connect to the speaker. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was there in person, but of course, my one of my tires is going flat, so I have to go to discount tire at my appointment time, which is not long after this. And yeah, don't want to be driving around on that. Yeah. Do they have a uh, do they have a microphone in the room? Because if it's coming through their computer audio, they could just hold up a microphone to the computer. We've got it. We've got it. What? Boom. Yeah. Simple problem. The volume was not turned up on the laptop. <laughs> Always check the plug and the volume first. You guys. <laughs> so Miriam, yes, we did check the volume, just not on all the devices. Oh, thank goodness. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, that's a little bit uh, of extra fun. So let's see. So I'm um, I am running the presentation off of my laptop. Let me pull that up first. Actually, I guess so. So we now have our situation. I think together we've got uh, we've got folks online that we can hear, including our presenter, which is awesome because uh, we always love to hear our presenter. Uh, and also the uh, the Sonia was the person who uh, who coached him before before getting us ready. So we're going to hand it off to Sonia in a second. Uh, that's going to take a little bit more of moving things around here on screen. So if you'll continue to bear with us a little bit, we should have them up on screen and their presentation uh, presentation ready to go in a sec. Okay. You know where to find the presentation, right? Or the the the. I have the presentation, but it's in PDF. It's going to take me a second because. Okay. I don't have that much territory. You want to All right. Whew, yay. <laughs> We're going to continue you for fast. a second there, Sonia. All right. And can someone do me a huge favor and just point the camera towards the audience for one second so we can see everybody? Thank you, Adam. Happy to. Well, don't get, don't get, uh, 
Put wave. Oh, look at them. They're all hi, waving. Every, oh my gosh. Hi, everybody. Hi, <laughs> I'm so sorry I can't be there today. You should be. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Yeah, I kind of I look, like looking at the audience better than the wall. It's kind of right? it's nice to see that lively crowd out there. Yes. OK, so and in a moment, our presenter is going to be online and going to be introduced by Sonia. So that's going to happen here. I think we could do that now, can't we? <laughs> yes. Uh, what we're going to do, Alex, is we're going to pull you up on screen for a second, and then I will go ahead and share screen so that uh, so we've got your, your presentation up. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Alex, you, you are on screen. We will, uh, you may even be able to see yourself. All right. Good to, good to go. Well, and I might as well start. So uh, everyone, I saw this application in the system and called Streamline Books. And I was like, I got to check it out because most of you know, you know, I'm a writer and author and publisher. And, and so I love this program that Alex is working with. And I'm using the appropriate coffee mug today. Um, <laughs> but uh, right. Um, Alex has an interesting yeah, an interesting system, an interesting team, and I love his question that he has today. And where is that presentation? <laughs> I can bring it up. <laughs> Just right. a second. Okay. Yeah, and uh, thanks for jumping in here, Alex. We uh, kind of jumped you in real fast. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me. This is uh, I'm excited. Great. Do we, are we set with the, we're getting there. All right, Eric will just interrupt me whenever, uh, whenever he thinks he's good to go. But uh, yeah, we've got, uh, so Alex came in, um, we were trying to find someone for this week, um, all this week, and he jumped in like Sunday night. Uh, and I think we're getting someone set up for next week. But if you guys uh, know someone who's had a business, uh, you know, for a short amount of time or for a long amount of time and wants to talk about it, especially where, where they'd like some advice, that would be great to present here. If there's anyone in the group today that thinks, oh, maybe I have a business. Well, Adam, Adam, I think we're ready, right? <laughs> yes, yes, okay. we are. We'll, we, we will claim to be ready. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, screen isn't quite where we want it to be, but it looks like we've got your presentation up. I think it's really big here. It's narrow. So it's going to preserve the aspect ratio of that thing. Just Go for it, Alex. Just start talking. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for having me. I'm honored to be here. And I live in Columbia, Missouri, so not too close to where you guys live, but excited for this. And um, as a team, uh, me and my co-founder and our chief technology officer tomorrow, we're going to the next two days. We've been reading a book called Traction, if any of you guys have read that book. And we're going to lock ourselves for eight hours tomorrow in St. Louis at a, um, a library and then Friday just to kind of work on the, um, the book here. Let's see if I have it. It's this is called Traction, if you guys have read it. Um, and it's all, all about the business operating system. So anyway, this what hopefully, you know, some feedback I can get from you guys will be great for me to take to the team as we discuss the next two days. But um, I'm a keynote speaker. I played college football at University of Missouri. I was a quarterback and once I graduated, I got into speaking. And so I was in a sales job for about four years. And on the, on the side, as a side hustle, I would start doing speaking engagements. And uh, before that, I didn't even know the speaking industry was an industry. I thought people just spoke for free. I didn't, didn't know. And, um, and so I uh, eventually went on to write two books. Uh, these are The Sale and Thrive You, which are behind me. And so um, writing these books have... Um, you know, kind of opened up a lot of doors for me professionally as far as speaking, consulting, um, traveling the country, speaking. And as I would do these speaking engagements, um, people would come up to me afterwards. Maybe you guys have done speaking and you can relay. They come up to you and a lot of people would say, hey, you know, I would love to write a book someday. And, you know, before we started Streamline, you know, I would pretty much just tell people like, well, good, you know, good job, Johnny. Keep, keep writing, you know, keep doing doing good, keep, stay disciplined. You know, that, that was my way of adding value. Right. And, and uh, my co-founder who's not on the call today, he's, he's, he has a meeting. 
um, he actually wrote a book. And about two years ago, I, I read that book. I saw he posted on LinkedIn. I read the book in a weekend and I was blown away by how good of a writer he was. And so I call him, I'm like, Will, you have a talent and you have a God-given talent. And, uh, and so we started talking and I said, I'm doing all these speaking. And you know, I meet people every single speaking engagement that tell me they want to write a book and you're this talented writer, like we should help people. And so essentially um, about a year and a half ago, I would say we, this uh, 2022 was our official year one. And um, it's been amazing just um, being able to help people, as Sonia said, write, edit, and publish their book, help them get their message out into the world. And so that's what we do. We've, we've essentially created a 16-week process where we take prospective authors, you know, we help them, you know, coach, coach them through it. We help them write. We help them edit. We help them publish their book. Um, some of that involves ghostwriting. There's, we have different packages that we can probably get into later, but editing, uh, ghostwriting, and then we have some marketing help as well. And so, yeah, if you want to go to the next slide, um, this has been our first year. And originally it was just Will and I, you know, uh, together, I would do the sales, he would write the book. We've just found there's a lot of in the traditional book publishing space, take like Penguin Random House or some of these big publishers, most likely no one on this call, myself included, would get a call from one of these publishers because they care about if you have 500,000 uh, social media followers, they it's kind of exclusive. Um, you know, like to get a traditional book publishing deal sometimes takes years. And so for me as a keynote speaker, it's like if I had to wait two, maybe three years to publish a book, I'm gonna be speaking on different topics. I've already moved on, right? And so if I could write a book in our process, which is 16 weeks, I can start monetizing my message or my expertise um, in that way. And so we just feel like there are, you know, there are good things about traditional publishing. Absolutely. Um, if you're a celebrity or Michelle Obama and you get an advance and it can work well, but for kind of the average person out there, it's like, if they have, if you have a story, if you have a message to share, how can you get that out into the world? And so that's what we're helping uh, provide for people. And you can go to the next slide as well. Um, just moving along here. And so essentially, like I mentioned at the beginning, um, for some people, they come to us, we essentially have three options. Option one is if, Let's say you're a prospective author, you want to write a book. Option one in that 16 week process is if you are leading the way writing and uh, you get matched up with a project manager, a writer and an editor, you get three people on your team. And in that 16 week process, you're the one leading the way writing. We give you writing goals, prompts, and then we're, we're trailing you in the document editing, you know, um, developmentally editing, all these things, getting ready to, to publish. Option two is a full ghostwrite. So let's say you're a busy executive, you're a former professional athlete, you're whoever, you just, you have it all in your head, but you don't enjoy the writing process. One of our writers uh, through six interviews with transcription service, all this stuff, we will interview you. And as we're writing, you, you know, it's collaborative in Google Drive. So the, the author is able to go in and say, mm, I wouldn't have said it like that. Go ahead and make that change, right? And so all that's kind of the second option. And the third option, we have some marketing kind of objectives along with one of those first two options. So things like helping people create a podcast, email newsletter, create the, a professional website. Many of our market is people who want to speak, uh, sometimes speak professionally, get paid thousands of dollars to speak per engagement. And then some people that we work with are, is just, I think about a grandpa that we just published his book. He's like, you know what? I want to have this book to be able to give to my grandkids at Christmas. And so he doesn't care about speaking engagements um, in that way. So you can go to the next slide. This kind of highlights a few of the people that we've worked with. Um, I mean, there's, I could tell you so many stories. Our first year, we've signed 37 um, authors. This was year one. Uh, we just, in the last few weeks, have been meeting with lawyers to kind of finalize everything with our LLC going into 2023. So I guess technically 2023 is our official year one, but in 2022, uh, we did 501,000 in, in sales. And so we did 37, uh, we've signed 37 clients. So we feel like we're I mean, we're so new and just excited to learn from people like yourself that have business experience, but we're just, yeah, we're just excited to share more stories. We feel like the world is full of news, but man, how can we move stories forward? And so you can hit the next slide uh, in that way. Here's a quote from my buddy who's an NFL player. He played in the NFL. He ended up getting cut and we started this journey with him while he was still in the NFL. And yeah, it's just a cool quote to read. And um, we get to work with a lot of people like that in that way. And for sake of time, we can go to the next slide. And then I just want to ask you guys a question. If you're, you know, when you when you say like, oh, I want to Google myself someday, I want to challenge yourself today before you go to bed tonight. Amazon yourself. 
Like if you put your name in Amazon, does something come up? And our thing would be, our challenge would be, why not? Like maybe you've been in a career for 40 years. Maybe you have all this experience. Maybe you've sold a company. Maybe you have an innovative idea. Maybe you have a story you want to share. Why isn't, you know, if, if you're a thought leader in your space, we believe that you should have a book. And that's just, we, we feel like a book is the hook that allows people to be exposed to your content. Um, for me, it's people read my book and then book me to, to speak at their companies and teams. And, and so we just, I just want to, I thought this was kind of a catchy thing to include. A Amazon yourself and see, see what comes up. And then uh, if you want to move forward to the last uh, two slides there, actually, let's just for the sake of time, let's skip this slide. Let's go to the last one because I want to stay on, on track here. Um, so this is my co-founder. Uh, mustache is looking good. I, uh, I got to work on my mustache. But um, essentially where we're at is we have a team of 22 writers. Um, we've just kind of handpicked um, some really, really talented award-winning award -winning writers and editors. And where we're at is we've created this system where when we bring in a new client, a new author, we create a client profile, you know, what's their book about, what's their history, what's some links to their social media. And then we send an email out to our 22 writers and say, hey, here's the client profile, who would be interested? And it's so like yesterday we did this, we got nine responses from our 22 writers saying, hey, I'd love to do this. We tell them how much they're getting paid for that work. Um, and then we try to match them up as well as we can, knowing kind of their giftings, their skill set with that author. So I guess looking ahead, just because I know we're at the time limit here. Um, yeah, I would love to hear from any, anyone, any questions as far as I think where we're at, where we're going to be meeting the next two days is like, yeah, what does our 10-year vision look like um, as we're just starting this? But I think, I guess for us is like, what are ways that when you guys look at our business, um, that we can continue to scale like scribe media they're kind of the giant in this industry they do close to 50 to 60 million dollars of revenue per year and we know that like we're just starting we're kind of the infants in this but um yeah we're just really excited that there's definitely players who are who have run this play successfully and we feel like we're you know, we have some differences but um yeah we're just excited to to learn and grow so would love to know how you guys from your perspective um yeah, I would say that how we could continue to scale moving on past year one. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. How about a round of applause? All right. I know that there's some questions that are already showing up in the, in the chat for folks in the room. Do you have any questions? And the usual deal, I'll, I'll model a little bit of this. So if you'll come on over here, usually, usually there's a presenter here. If you'll come on over here, uh, that way you're on camera and actually sort of facing our presenter. Um, if you'll and state I'm your name, to, uh, oh, I'm sorry. If you'll state your name, your organization, and then you know, whatever question you've got, and we'll take a few from this group and we'll take a couple from online. Sonia, did you have something to jump in with now? No, I was just going to mention that everyone should mention their name and where they're from, but you already did that. So there you go. All right. Sounds good. <clears throat> X marks the spot. Hi, great presentation. Um, my name is Marlene, Marlene Brown. I teach photovoltaics at CNM. Community college. Uh, so how do people find out about you? Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks for asking. So that's the been kind of, the, I guess, the blessing for us is we've never spent a dollar in paid marketing or ads or anything. And so we're just, um, yeah, it's been word of mouth. And uh, I think, I think for us, I mean, we're both Christians, we feel like God is just putting people in our lap that uh, are, are great fit. But I mean, from a, we get a few inbound leads on our website per week. Um, some of those aren't great. They're just off Google people. You know, we have 50, um, I think, Google reviews now. So people are, I guess, finding us that way. But really, it's just relationships, people that reach out to me. Hey, I read your book, The Sale, loved it. And before I would just be like, oh, thank you. Now it's like, hey, thank you so much. I see you on your LinkedIn profile that you're a, um, whatever, a speaker and a football coach. Have you ever thought about writing a book? And then they're like, yeah. And then we get on a Zoom call. So we have a kind of an intro call, which is that first one-on-one -on -one Zoom call. And that's kind of our, our sales process, I guess. Great, thanks. Awesome, thank you. Um, let's see, other questions in the room we want to bring up, or do we want, we can go to uh, Miriam and then Sonia online. Good morning, uh, Miriam Ortiz Pino. Uh, my company is more than organized. I'm a professional organizer and money breakthrough business coach. And uh, you didn't mention specific challenges, just that you're working on a vision. And so I'm wondering what's super frustrating day-to-day -day in your business right now. 
Yeah, I mean, I come, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, sorry, I didn't mention that. I, I guess I come from like a pretty uh, intense sales background and, and that was straining. It wasn't like in my skill set. So to be honest, like I quit uh, December of 20, December 21st of 2021, I quit my full-time job, pursue full-time speaking in this. So in some ways, like to me, every day feels like a sabbatical. I know that sounds weird, but <laughs> compared to what I came from and I had two side hustles and a just really intense job. Um, uh, but to answer your question, I guess, thinking specifically on the business. Um, gosh, I guess it's just like, how can we find more people? I, I, here, here's a challenge. Here's a challenge. Um, we started essentially a 12 month marketing program where we were managing people's social media, where we were doing kind of almost like creating a media company within Streamline. And what mm -hmm. we found is that it was just too much. And so what we've done is we've made that into a three month author launch package. So it's kind of three months we're providing these things rather than a 12 month management. So that's been a huge challenge that we're kind of still working through and just finalize some things there. Yeah, I guess it's just like, how do we find more people? Um, more people that are kind of in our, maybe, gosh, I'm sorry for not being organized in the challenge, but I would say maybe that relates to that is who is exactly like our niche? Because a lot of people reach out to us and say, hey, I would love to do a book. Um, either they can't afford our services or maybe they're just, they're just not fit. Um, so so your own marketing, marketing messaging and figuring out your ideal client and your niche. Um, yeah. Yeah. Going through that process is always one of those things that people do as a bit of an afterthought. And then it's like, oh, it takes a bit of time, but it's the thing that saves you so much time on the other end. So yeah, I encourage you to take a look at that soon. That's a great point. And I think that's part of the agenda for the next two days is part of that of like, yeah. what's the, what's the income of the our client? What's the, so yeah, thank you for bringing that up. That's great. All right. So I'll bring up uh, Sonia um, and, and then right. Alan after her, just a second. All right, cool. Well, um, I have so many things <laughs> we might have, <laughs> might have to talk oh. after this too. Um, so I'm Sonia doing, I am founder of Women's Thriller Writers Association and Plot Duckies Publishing, and I'm a award-winning and best-selling author and blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, but my, my first question would be, do you run Amazon ads for your authors or do you offer that as a service? Um, we haven't got into that. Um, that's probably a good suggestion though, just something to think about. I think what's hard when we think about because a lot of people ask us like, what's the recoup, right? Because we don't take any book royalties. So we're paid in four installments in that 16 weeks. And then once the book is published, we don't get any royalties. And so for example, my friend who was literally the bachelor on the TV show last year, we're about to publish his book. We were teammates at Mizzou. Like he has 300,000 Instagram followers. To him, he doesn't want us to take royalties of each, you know, so he's fine to pay us up front. So what's hard about the Amazon ads thing is to me, but you tell me if I'm wrong is, like the, the the keynote speakers that I know who are, I mean, I have buddies who are making over a million dollars a year just in speaking fees and they're like average dudes, but they just hustle. And so they're put, they're sending out messages every day to people. They're advocating, they're getting their book out there. I guess something we think about is like, well, what if we have an author who is doing that compared to an author who like doesn't have any social media following, doesn't have any email new lit and they're not pushing their own book. Like how do we help that person? And maybe an Amazon ad is, is a way to do that. But we've struggled with that a little bit of like, if someone's not pushing their own brand, because that's what you have to do as an author, like, right, you have your random Atomic Habits book that sells millions of copies. But even that book, he had an email list for years before he launched his book. And so I think people just assume, you, as, as you know, you're an award winning author, you already know these things. But just for the whole group, it's like people assume you write a book, and then people are pounding on your door. They want to pay you 20,000 to speak. It's like, this is not how it works. You have to be willing to, like for me, my week this week is consisting of me sending out, you know, I did a speaking engagement on Friday to athletic directors in college. I'm going to send out 50 free copies to athletic directors at schools with a handwritten note saying, hey, thanks for letting me speak to your group. I would love to speak to your university. It's like, that's like the unsexy part of being an author and a speaker. It's like, I'm giving away my product. But yeah, what are your thoughts on Amazon ads? I'd love to learn so you can if these books have great covers and great descriptions you can make positive money on amazon ads um, i will say 99 percent of the books and the teachers out there teach it wrong like they teach these spaghetti ads where you throw everything on the wall and hope it works 
um, if you, if you want to follow, like I teach this, but also Brian Cohen, he's the best at the process. You small, start small and slowly, and you actually spend less than your mate, than your, you spend less on your ads than you're making on your sales. Right. And that's what we all want. <laughs> cool. So I, I think as long as you're offering it to them and like the Brian Cohen style that, uh, this is something that could be very positive for any of your writers. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Thank you. You're All right, we're, we're adding in uh, Alan over here, and then we'll go into the, the room here if that piped. Alan. Hi, I'm Alan Ramos, and I've retired from all six of my professions. And um, I have a, a deeply held core belief that one of the greatest barriers to great success is some success that that keeps people from from pushing forward to to find uh, to find that great success. And my suggestion for you is to spend some time and some money with my good friend Phil Wilton, who has written a book um, in in his process can help your organization develop an ongoing self-reflective um, dynamic where you can constantly improve what you're doing. And I, I don't want to say a whole lot more than that because Phil can do that. Um, but but I, 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 I I could say that I I guess I helped edit his book a little bit. Um, so I got to read it a number of times. And it's a, it's a process that I had been involved in professionally uh, over the, the last few decades uh, as, a, uh, as a staff member, as an executive, and as a consultant. And I, I can tell you that Phil has a wonderful handle on the process. And he can certainly speak for himself, but um, I really, I really urge you to to have a chat with Phil um, because I think if you do, um, you'll want to spend some time with him, and and I think that you, you will find it a great benefit. So that's my suggestion for you. Awesome, thank you. So yeah, I love the well, generosity. You, so Alex. yeah, Phil, Phil's in there. Let's see, we're pull you up there. Uh, Phil Wilton from uh, Executive Outcomes. Um, I'm a strategist, if you like, for business. Um, I've been in uh, corporate Europe and corporate America and decided to put everything I learned about strategy um, into a book. And um, Alan was very helpful in um, helping me to write my book. Where were you when I wanted to write my book was my question initially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but see here, hold that, hold the, hold your book up again. It's like, that's exactly, that's that right there. Like with your expertise and knowledge, like that's what we're doing for authors. So that's a great example because it's like, you have this, you have this expertise that people, Hey, 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 Phil, can I get coffee with you? It's like, Hey, you can't get coffee with everyone. You can just hand them a copy of your book. Hey. So yeah. Anyway, thanks for mentioning that. But yeah, well, I wish um, I I've, I've, uh, I used to frequent the, uh, uh, fat pipe every Wednesday uh, when I was resident in New Mexico. Unfortunately, I moved to New York. <laughs> and so I joined every Wednesday online. Um, so, so one of the questions I had was, I, I mean, the process that I went through to, to get my book done with a publishing company was um, initially very good and turned out to be very exhausting and, and strenuous towards the end of the, of the period primarily because my initial um, proofreader was who was very good, left the company and I got given another one. And, and uh, th then a lot of problems began to happen. But um, roughly, uh, can you kind of tell me what, or, or the people in the audience as well, what's, the, what's your pricing range? I mean, uh, I understand you're not taking royalties, I keep I've got the royalties to my book. Um, so I only pay the set fee to get it published, and then I pay them when I want the books. Um, so what if I wanted to do a update version two? Um, what how would how would that I approach that with you? And roughly what would that be? 
Yeah. So one di key difference. I, I, I don't know. You can't be exact. No, so. no, no. Yeah. One key difference I heard you say is you said you pay them when you want more books. That's where we're different. So we utilize, um, and I'm sure some of you guys are familiar, Amazon's technology of print on demand. So for example, once we publish an author, um, essentially they would technically never have to buy a book if they didn't like their own book. Like if you publish, if we publish your book and it's print on demand, how it works as, as probably a lot of us know, is just like when someone bought you, you send people to your link. So when they buy your book off your website or whatever, when someone buys that book, Amazon prints a copy, ships it just like you would buy anything off Amazon. So there's no, that's probably what it sounds like with a little bit of a difference. You're paying the publisher for more of your books. Um, well, yeah. uh, let me let me interject there. It's on Amazon, all right? right. And, it, right. and I'm trying to get into bookstores as well over here. Yeah. But it's on Amazon, so I don't pay for those books that are going out from right. Amazon. Yeah. But you were um, saying, it, yeah. If, it's only if I want copies of the additional copies of the book that I'm taking to people when I do speaking. Author, <laughs> author copies, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would say my best suggestion for bookstores um Number one, relationships are huge. I did a book sign at Barnes and Noble is because I, you know, I knew the person. Um, one thing I would say on bookstores, just and maybe it's because I'm a millennial, so this is how I think, but statistically speaking, 70% of people buy books on Amazon. So people are getting their book in the bookstores. Yes, it's cool. Like, you know, I, when I walk in my Barnes and Noble, I see my book there, it's it's a cool feeling, but I'm not really generating a ton of sales from that. Um, now, obviously the big authors do. But that would be one thing I would say is like a lot of authors say, how can I get my book in Barnes and Noble? How can I, like, there's ways you can do that through going through Ingram Spark where it has expand distribution. Technically that local Barnes and Noble could find your book in the demographic or in the, you know, kind of the place where you would, the, the manager would order it. But the reality is just because your book is in this crowded marketplace doesn't mean that local Barnes and Noble manager is actually going to click on yours to have in their store. Um, to answer your question, our option one, is around uh, 13,800, option two, 18,000, but that's a full ghost right. And then our option three, which is one of those two options, plus a three month launch package, website, podcast, all, email newsletter, all these things, monthly coaching, that's around 35,000. And one thing I'll say on that, some of you guys are probably like, wow, that's a lot. Number one, Scribe Media, I think their entry level package, which they're like the dominant force. I mean, they have, they have some packages that are like 135,000 we know that we're kind of catered to a certain demographic. Um, we want to be able to do as many books as we can, but we also know that like the books we've been doing, for example, are for, and I guess this goes into what we talked about earlier um, with whoever made that comment of our demographic, we're salespeople, financial planners. I'm looking at some of the books up here on my shelf, former athletes. Um, yeah, so I guess there's that component too, that for, we know, we're, we know we're not for everyone, but we know that the people who have really, really have been our like raving fans and have referred us to all their friends are these people who are uh, want to get into speaking, are already getting paid very well to speak. And so this is just another way for them to make an impact and move books at events like you were saying, Phil, to be able to get author copies. You can do that. So I know that was a mouthful. I apologize, but that was a good That's question. That's okay. Um, so I would... I would uh... Uh, follow up on Alan's comments. Um, maybe we could have a one-to-one uh, -one afterwards. Um, I've got just to, I just screenshot your contact details. And um, yeah, my book is, uh, yeah, how, how do you plan, how do you strategically plan how you're going to expand your business? And, and, and that's taken from um, multinational corporations I work for to small corporations to startups I've actually run and and, and implemented and uh, and I'm still working on a couple in New Mexico as well cool. so um, and, and then it will give you some insight on where you need to go and what value you have in your organization that you can put forward to the outside world to get the get the feedback that you want yeah I love that all right, let's see. So um, one last call for questions in house. Anybody, any other questions to, to raise here? Excellent. I'm gonna ask a question. My name is Eric Burns Whitmore. I'm one of the co-hosts for organizers here at One Million Cups. And I'm just curious, is there, you know, we, there's been a lot of little bits and pieces of feedback, but I know you're kind of going into this, this uh, intense weekend. Uh, 
is there any other, you know, last question or something where folks can put something in the chat to just kind of, you know, something that wasn't covered or something else that you just want a little bit more information from our group here? Maybe not. <laughs> I'm not sure if that made sense. I don't. I don't think Alex knows you were talking to him. Oh. Oh, oh sorry. Yes. yes I I, there sorry, we go. I thought, I, I thought you said, "Does anyone else have any other questions?" You. I did. I did ask that. But yes. So for you, let me see if I'm pointing at the camera. Does that mean you'll you'll see, <laughs> Alex? I was just curious if there's any other thing that you'd like to get. Um, I was wondering, is, is it so? It's all, all up front, or is it in the stock? I think he says something about installments or. Yeah, yep, four installments of 25% each in that 16 week period. So it's four months, you're paying over four months. We definitely have a lot of authors at the end of the year who are like, hey, if my business for tax purposes, I wanna pay you the whole thing for the end of the year, that's fine. But the way that we pay our writers and editors is the author's paying us, we're then paying them for their services in that way. So yeah, four installments. 18,000 just broke, broken down. And then at the end, is there any additional fees or anything like that? Or Nope. At the end of the day, to that option, let's say we're ghostwriting your book. At the end of 16 weeks, your book's on Amazon. Um, the only additional fees you'd have is if you did that option three, which is, hey, design me a really nice website, pot, all those different extra things. But no, if at the end of that 16 weeks, that's why we just feel, yeah, we feel good about it because a lot of um, Phil, it sounds like your publisher was similar, but there's a lot of book publishers that just take a very large royalty and if you have, if you're good at sales and if you're able to move books, it's like, that's, that's your thing. And we just, we're, our website is writemybooks.com, not write my book. And we just know that we already work with a lot of our authors who are like, oh, I'm already have ideas for my second one. I'm going to call you guys in a few months. So we're just confident that authors, like I'm sure Phil, he has his book. I'm sure he will write more books in the future because people have resonated with his content that he's gotten compliments on his book. It won't be Phil. I'm I'm the one making the announcement. It won't won't be Phil's last book here. Everybody, get ready for it. Line up <laughs> in the store. But I, I that's I just think it's yeah. So yeah, it's all up front. And and we for some authors early on we were kind of creative on payment to make it work for people. I think that's the thing early on. We definitely would lower our prices in certain situations for you know people that that wanted to make it happen so that we could get to the point where we're at now. I guess. But yeah. All right, so let's see. So what I'll do then is I will actually hand it off to Sonia to help close us out. Let me get you up on screen again, Sonia. All right. Well, this has been amazing. I do have one more thing, which is when you guys are in this big meeting and you're thinking about ways to scale, think about are there ways that you can sell something that doesn't take your time, right? Um, so for example, you said that social media just it was it was it just was too much work. Uh, maybe offering a class to your authors, you know, for a fee um, that includes, uh, you know, how to do social media and includes like some uh, templates that they could use. Because I know a lot of, I am a total ham. I love social media. I'm all over social media, but I know a lot of authors are, don't even know where to start or are shy or don't know what to post. And so those kind of things I know could be helpful for them um that's great, that's great yeah. and then i have our last final two questions oh miriam has something go ahead miriam i was just gonna say during your um weekend planning thing to really think about what kind of work you guys like to do mm. um i think especially in in the arena you're in with the sales and entrepreneurs and and that kind of people it's really important to kind of live your, your talk. Um, and if you're doing stuff just for the money or the added money you can make, you won't really stand out. Mm, it, that's good. Yeah. I mean, if your piece is just the getting the book out there and on Amazon, leave it at that versus adding all the social media stuff. But I don't know, maybe you guys really enjoy all that. Who knows? Oh, that's good. That's what that, that... <laughs> No, that's great advice. That's what we found. You know, we were man, you know, for 12 months, we we're having to manage someone's Twitter account. We're just like, that gets us away from what, you know, mm -hmm. we, instead of doing yearly marketing, we've kind of shifted to the strategic plan to provide you people can, like, oh, Sonia, what you were saying, you know, you can find collaboration partners to take care of that stuff. Yeah. Right. 
All right. So real right. quick, there's a there's one final question in the room, and then uh, then I'll ask you my two final questions, and then we'll do a quick uh, shout out session. So uh, back to Fat Pipe. Oh, hi, Alex. Uh, my name hey. is Avi. Uh, I'm not really a business person at the moment, <laughs> but I do have a, a, a possible suggestion. Uh, you were saying earlier you kind of a profile of like your sort of ideal customer. It seems to me that like that person's on LinkedIn, probably. Have you considered maybe using LinkedIn ads to sort of like target that particular person and maybe generate some some conversations and revenue that way? That's a great idea. So I we just um, I just got LinkedIn Premium. Would you say it's LinkedIn Tabs? What is it? Advertising. I mean, you could. Oh, even, oh, ads. Okay, ads. ads. People. So uh, you know what you know who that person is, and so I think it's pretty pretty. Uh, easy to, to find those people. Yeah. Thank, Chances are they're on LinkedIn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thanks, man. That's really good advice because I haven't, we've thought about doing like thanks, Google man. Google ads, but yeah, I think LinkedIn ads a great idea. Thank you. And Sonia, it is back to All you. Right. All right, back to me. So I know you're not in New Mexico, but we are all curious, red or green? Oh, Red. Red. All right. Have you actually ever had New Mexico red chili? Uh, I don't know. I've never had a speaking engagement in your area, but kind of maybe close-ish, but not New Mexico. But um, I need to. I need to go there. So yeah, yes. maybe I need to come. I need to come speak at an event so I can come visit. Yes. So when you come here and you order New Mexican food, you just you'll have to start with red now because you said red. So you'll ask for red. <laughs> <laughs> Love and. It. Um, what can we as a community do for you? Great question. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess if there are people that you know that just want help with on the book process. Um, yeah, or if you think of anything that's related to anything as we talked about today. Um, but yeah, I would just say, I guess one thing I'll mention is anyone that's referred to us as a company. So if you know, if your aunt wants to write a book and we end up working with them, um, we uh, give out a $250 Amazon gift card to you and then we'll donate $250 to your choice. So that's a good little last action item. If you're like, oh, I know someone that would be good. All you have to do is do an email intro, connect us, whatever. Um, and we'd love to, to help you out in the process. So for those people in the audience, can you give us your email address? Yes, I'll put it in the chat right now. And then, but also say it out loud for, for everybody who's listening. Uh, okay, yeah. So it's just alex at writemybooks.com. Awesome. And then my website is alexspeaking.com. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Alex. This has been right. awesome. More applause, all sorts of good stuff. Let's go to, uh, I'm going to change the view for a second. I've asked um, if I can. Let's see, so many pieces of fantastic technology that we're working with today, and I'm loving them all. I asked, uh, Jeff puts, uh, Jeff Borgel uh, from CNM Ingenuity put some stuff in the chat, which we may have seen, but uh, let's also make that, uh, make that a little more audible. So I'm gonna add a spotlight for you. Oh, I'm adding all sorts of spotlights, just a second. So we're gonna take a couple folks off. And we'll get uh, Jeff up in there. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind sharing about those events, I'll kind of scroll back so that uh, so that they're visible. Hi, everyone. Um, um, reminder, I'm Jeff Bargell. I'm the uh, program director for all the entrepreneurship programs at CNM. So uh, Activate NM has a few events coming up on uh, January 18th. We're having a entrepreneur social hour. Just come on down. It's pretty casual. Uh, it'll be a sidetrack brewing on uh, January 20th is our January New Mexico Startup Ops Hour. So if you have a question, um, or need some advice on uh, any area like sales and marketing, strategy, financing, pitch practice. Uh, we have breakout rooms available for anybody that's looking for help in those. Those are totally open to the public. Anyone can come in and drop into a breakout room with one of our experts. Our featured guest for that night is going to be Peter Solani. He's the founder of Gust. So we will just get him uh, five minutes to talk about his company and then move into the breakout rooms. On uh, January 26th is the New Mexico Angels Winter Quarterly. That'll be at Q Station. Um, and then on February 17th will be February's New Mexico Startup Office Hour. So we do this every month. So if you missed January's, then you can come on down to February's or come to all of them. Uh, our featured entrepreneur for that one will be Andrew Clark, who is the founder of Hoonify Technologies. So again, we'll hear five to 10 minutes 
uh, from him. And that's not on our website yet, but uh, put a hold the date for March 9th will be the next Startup Fiesta. So if you attended the last one, uh, we sold it out and then some. Um, so it was a fantastic event where we'll, we'll repeat it again, where we'll probably have about 15 local entrepreneurs each giving one minute pitches. And then there will be tables uh, and booths to go talk to those folks afterwards, as well as a food and drink like we had before. So it was a, it was a really fun, high energy event and good time. So, uh, and then lastly, ski lift pitch, uh, top prize of $10,000 for the best pitch there. Uh, it is a unique New Mexico event where entrepreneurs pitch one-on-one -on -one with investors going up the ski lift. Uh, and then you come back to the lodge and the semi or the finalists then pitch for the final top prize of $10,000. You get exposure to 15 investors representing about $500 million in investable capital. The deadline to apply is uh, January 15th. So you've got a couple more days to get that in there. And then uh, we will see all of the semifinalists in Taos on February 23rd. So thank you very much. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thanks for sharing those. Um, let's see. Someone offered to do a shout out. Do we have any shout outs in the room here? We're going to be closing down in a second. So if you've got a shout out, oh, do you have instructions for our shout outers? Uh, I have a shout out myself. Oh, okay. So uh, if you've got a shout out, hold up. If you've got a shout out in the room, please come on over here so we can go through those fairly quickly. And then we'll, uh, we'll head over to the folks online. So uh, my shout out is for NM Bio, which held an absolutely fantastic all day event yesterday at CNM uh, Workforce Training Center. And uh, if you're at all interested in bioscience, uh, don't miss these. This was their flagship event for the year. And I think everybody went away with some new knowledge and some new connections. And it looks like I'll be giving pitches to potential interns at CNM. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Paul. Let's see. I'm gonna bring Phil up. Here we go. Everybody hear me, yes? Yes. Okay, um, uh, back to my book. <laughs> and um, I just wanna let everybody know, and I told Sonia earlier and she said I should shout it out. Um, I'm getting plenty of reviews now on Amazon, uh, which I'm kind of pleased about. And all of those reviews have been 100%. And uh, the other thing I wanted to do uh, to offer uh, to everybody there in the audience um, is something I've offered onto LinkedIn um, on my page for the uh, beginning of the year. And I started off by saying, those of you who want to achieve great success in 2023, then I have a tangible offer for you. And with the help of Alan, um, who edited this for me, um, basically, there's always more value in your business um, than you think there is. And it's often hiding in plain sight. And so if you buy my book and you go through that process or you um, buy my book and you're reading through that process and you want to get more information or you have questions, I'm offering a uh, complimentary half hour Zoom with anybody that gets the book, has any questions or wants to know what they need to do to really implement the process that I've, I've, I've laid out in my book to help you improve your business. Um, and so uh, a couple of references to you people in the audience. If you speak to Laurie or Lisa from Envive, they've actually done it. If you speak to Kikoa and Oscar from uh, family documentaries, they've actually done it, and they can tell you how helpful it was for them. So anybody that needs any help on how to do strategy, put it into operation, um, I'm, I'm prepared to give you a half hour Zoom conference minimum, half hour, and then um, hopefully from there on you can uh, uh, improve your business and expand it. I'm done. All right, Adam, what you got? Uh, so the this morning was really fun uh, <laughs> in a lot of challenging ways. And uh, I wanna give a shout out to Eric who arrived earlier than everyone else uh, to say stuff and put things together in order to find the problems. So we had some <laughs> sort of flexibility, especially because he is gonna be shifting his relationship with One Million Cups here soon. And so I wanna really thank you for all the work you've been putting in. And you're going to continue putting some in, but it's not going to be as much in person and other things. So 
I just want to give you a big shout out for that. Thanks, Thanks Adam. Thanks, everyone. All right. Would you be willing to close it out there, Paul? Absolutely. Um, I don't know about you, but I see a lot of potential authors in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you'll take, yeah, I hope you'll take today's talk to heart and think about what it is you have to offer the world. If you don't think you have anything, try talking to people around here and see if they're interested in what you have to say. Uh, there's probably a larger audience for what you know. So let's lift up entrepreneurship in New Mexico, and I'll see you next week. All right. Let's see. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm waving even though I'm not visible. Fantastic. <laughs> Oh, we still have a camera. On. Like, no, we haven't, returned, we haven't turned off something essential. Let's you do everything. Stop the zoom. Oh, did I? There we go.